Let's study Parshat Vayishlach with Rashi's commentary. The Shabbat, Parshat Vayishlach, the famous moment when Yaakov decides to attempt a reconciliation with, if not an encounter with his brother, as he comes back to the land of Israel from Padan Aram with his family and all that he's acquired, sends messengers to Esau. Vayishlach Yaakov Malachim Lefanav. Jacob sent messengers before him. If we translate simply, Malachim can be human messengers. But Rashi takes a different tack and quotes a Midrash from Midrash Rabbah, Genesis Rabbah, 75, section 75, the fourth section. And he says, Malachim Mamash. They were divine angels. They were absolutely divine. We are not talking about human beings here. Now, he could have quoted Genesis Rabbah 77, which suggests that the angel was the uh, angel or spirit of Esau. And that kind of creates a more internal dimension to the struggle that he t- tossed and turned before dawn uh, during his night of sleep before this encounter that he knew he was having the next day. But instead, Rashi insists these are literally angels. An interesting choice and a short comment to give us the sense that God is really involved in, in this picture. In our uh, study earlier this week in Sidur class, where we talked about this being a uh, scene and a story in our Torah that could inform the way we think of spiritual life and prayer life, our friend Henry Glanternick suggested that in every serious struggle we have, spiritual struggle, for a religious person, God is a participant. And I thought that was a nice way of saying it. Uh, that's distinct from a partner. And I'm going to ask Henry about that when uh, we talk next, if he meant a partner or a participant. Because sometimes we don't really sense God's partnership. We sense God participating and having to struggle with the reality of our lives that God has uh, caused and helped to unfold. So I think participant is a nice choice there. And Yaakov's knowing that God is participating and for the readers of Torah, knowing that God is participating, Rashi indeed insists that we understand that these messengers uh, Jacob had at his disposal were divine angels, that God did agree and participate and partner with him at this point. But of course, later on, he would face the angel of either Esau or the internal kind of spiritual churnings that he would have to face uh, that night when he goes to sleep before his encounter with his brother. And even though a lot of artists have said that it was a real angel with whom he struggled with at night, more modern commentary and more psycho-spiritual commentary has seen that Jacob's struggle was truly with uh, the man he had become, the man himself, the actions and all he had to answer for in his own life before he encountered his brother after a 20 year separation. That said, Rashi tells us that Jacob sent divine beings to tell Esau that he was back in town and these divine beings come back and they do not report exactly what Esau said or any message that Esau had for his brother. What they do is they indicate to Jacob that Esau is coming your way. This is verse seven now. And that he has 400 men with him. Ishimo. So it comes along verse 8. Jacob is greatly afraid and distressed. Yaakov was absolutely petrified. And he was entirely distressed. He had such service. Rashi has this rule that he can't leave a parallel construction alone. He won't say it's simply a literary redundancy or a literary feature, the redundancy, in order to 
make a point, really stress the, the, the true emotions that he was feeling. Yes, it says that he was afraid and distressed, and thusly we have to investigate why the two verbs, why the two coming in the same first half of verse 8 of chapter 32. Well, he, what he'll do is he'll say Vayira has a different meaning than Vayetzer in this case. Vayira meaning Shema Yehareg. The first fear that he has is that he's going to be killed. And of course, he doesn't know what to make of Esau coming with 400 men. I mean, is this some great diplomatic mission for peace with 400 men at his side? Yaakov is afraid. Afraid for his life. But Vayetzerlo is not the stress caused by being so afraid of uh, dying, being afraid of kill, being killed. Vayetzerlo is the fear, im yaharog hu et acherim, that Jacob himself would be thrust into battle and made into a killer. Jacob did not want to be that spiritual warrior. He didn't want to have to take up the cause of fighting Esau, his brother, even if he represented the other nations of the world. Esau becomes, in later literature, the Edomites. He's the forefather of the Edomites who help Babel, Babylonians, help Babylon raise Jerusalem and, 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 and even enslave and exile the Jewish people. He becomes the symbol, Esau, for Rome and the Roman legions and the Roman Empire and the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in that case, in that vein. But Jacob doesn't want to be the Jewish warrior. He wants to make peace with his brother. And we can understand that, that even though there are times when Jewish power has to be asserted, like take the Maccabean uh, revolt, where the priests became the priest warriors in order to overcome the Seleucid Hellenizing forces. Yaakov here really worries that he may be killed and that he will have to be turned into a killer. Does not want to meet on that level and uh, seeks to really meet Esau in the land after all these years to make tshuva, to return one to the other and potentially to uh, align their hearts. And if not align their hearts, at least to say, we have now become men and we'll have to relate maturely. And they do in the end find the open door to walk through together as grown men, becoming mature in their outlooks, Esau will invite Yaakov to walk his way and to even travel his paths with him. But Yaakov, determined to be a family provider and the father of the Jewish people, will ultimately say, why don't you go your way and I'll stay here and he settles down in what we call the the Torah calls Sukkot. And thankfully, he was neither killed nor had to become a killer himself. And while he was fearful, he was able to find the strength to create that encounter that was so necessary in his life with his brother. May all sibling relationships be able to receive the blessing of reconciliation or at least reducing tension and, and division and divisiveness like we see here in Torah and through Torah's lens and uh, may it even extend to nations as we read the Jacob story and Esau story allegorically to represent the Jewish people and our relationships with the nations of the world uh, symbolized by Esau. Shabbat Shalom.